All right, in the last video, we created a very, very simple component in React.js. Now we're going to work with state. All right, so state is basically a master object that determines how the component renders and behaves. All right, so it allows us to create components that are dynamic and interactive. So when we're working with, um, actually, we want to go into our component one file. Um, now, to create st our state object, we're going to do that in a constructor. All right, so up here we're going to say constructor. And when we're working in a, a subcomponent like this, we want to call super so that we can inherit anything from the main component. And then what we can do is say this.state and set that to an object. All right, we can put any state values we want here. All right, so I'm going to put in, let's say, show text and actually we'll say show message and we'll set that to true. Now, nowhere else in your application should you do this dot state equals or this dot state dot message equals and try to set it like that. If you want to change something in your state, you want to do this dot set state. OK, and then pass in the object and then show text or whatever it is you want to change because when you change the state that way it's going to re-render your component okay and make any updates necessary using the virtual dom all right now we have this state value show message which is set to true now let's say down here we only want to display this message if this is set to true so there's a few ways we could do this we could, for instance, go up here above the return and say let create a variable called message. And then we could do an if statement here. And we can say if this dot state dot message. Then here we'll say uh, msg equals this dot props dot uh, what is it message. OK, and we could do else msg equals nothing okay and then down here instead of displaying this we could just put in our msg variable okay if we save that uh, let's see show message um, oh I did state and dot message this should be show message okay so now they're showing because it's true now if I were to go and set this to false and save you'll see that they're not showing all right now there is an easier way we could do this conditional rendering uh, i'm just going to comment this out because i do want you guys to still have the code uh, but what we could do is just go in here and we could open up some curly braces and we could say show message okay so if that's true then we want to display this dot props dot message Okay, then we can put a colon and then what we want if it's not true, which is just um, empty, just an empty string. All right, so if we go ahead and save that, whoops, show message is not defined. That's because it needs to be this dot state dot show message. Okay, so now if we were to go and set this to true and save, now they're showing. Okay, and we wouldn't need to do any of this. Now let's say we want to change this. Uh, this value. Okay, we want to change a state value and have the component re-render. So we could put this. Um, you don't want to put it in the render. You want to use a lifecycle method. Okay, remember I talked about lifecycle methods, and there's a bunch of them. Actually, I should probably show you guys real quick. So let's say React lifecycle. All right, so you can see right here, component lifecycle, we have the constructor, which we've worked with, render, and this this is for mounting, okay? So when the component's mounted, there's this component will mount, okay? That's what we want to use for, um, for this example. And that's going to run before the render. After the render, component did mount will run, okay? So if you want to fire something off then, you can hook into that one. Uh, we also have lifecycle methods that have to do with just updating component will receive props 
should component update and so on. So what I'm going to do is go above the render and we're going to say component will mount. All right, and just to show you that this runs, let's say console log and we'll just say ran. Okay, so if we go ahead and save that, you'll see down here we get ran. All right, now what I'm going to do here is say this dot set state and let's pass in show message and we'll set that to false. If we go ahead and save that, now you'll see that it's not showing up. Okay, because uh, the constructor set it to true, but then this ran and set it to false. Now, what if we want the user to be able to change the state? So for that, we could set up an event. So let's go down here and we're going to put in a button. Okay, we're going to give this an on click. All right, and in the on click, we're going to say this dot show text or show message. All right, and then up here, let's say show message. And we want to do this dot set state. And say show message, set that to true. All right, so if we go ahead and save this, and I'm going to get rid of two of two of these components here, just so we have one to deal with. All right, now if I click it, we're going to get this cannot read property set state of null. So it's looking at this right here. So set state of null. So it's saying this is null. So what we need to do is we need to go down to where we have this show message and say dot bind, and we want to bind this. All right, so now if we save that and I click, you'll see that it shows the message. Okay, it changes the state, and then the virtual DOM will update and re-render the component. All right, so that is what React is all about. Now, there's a lot of other aspects of React.js that I could go over, but most of it we're going to go over in React Native anyways. I don't want to make this, this whole course about React itself. So we're going to wrap this up, and in the next section, we're going to get React Native set up. Uh, we're going to get Android Studio set up, and we'll go from there.